Uh, another area where we can do some review is when we're looking at various formulas and we want to solve a formula for a specified variable. So our first formula is for area. We want to solve for the W. Well, this is L times W. So to get rid of the L and get the W alone, we divide both sides by L. Here the L's cancel out and we get W equals A over L. So that one was sort of easy. Now the next one is similar. Circumference equals pi d. Now we want to solve for d. Well, it's done very much the same way. This is pi times d. So we divide both sides by the factor we don't want on that side, which is pi. Pi cancels out on this side. And we get d equals circumference divided by pi. All right. Now, again, you may want to try to do these ahead of time, and then we'll show you the protocol for solving. Now, and this one's a little more complicated. We have area equals pi r squared plus pi r and then a capital S. And we want to solve for this S. Now here we use the techniques for solving equations and getting, this is a term. Terms are separated by either a plus or minus. So this is a term. Now to get this term over to the other side, we simply move it over to the other side and change its sign. On this side it's positive. So on the other side it will become negative pi r squared equals pi r capital S. So we've isolated the S containing term. Now, these are all factors, pi times r times s. To get rid of these two, to isolate the s, we divide both sides by pi r. And we have to include a long division bar, pi r. So here these cancel out. We're left with s, and this is the result. All right, now, if you're taking notes, that would be a good idea. Practice. And let's go on to our next one here. It's x, 4x, minus 3y, equals 12. And we want to solve for this y. Well, this is a form of an equation that is linear because our x values are just to the first power, which we don't write. And this is standard form of a linear equation in two variables, x and y, that we'll be studying in one of our units. We want to solve for the y. So, again, the same technique. We're going to take this 4x, transpose it to the other side. It just changes the sign. Now, we then have a negative 3y. But we want our y to be a positive. So the usual way is to take whatever term, or I should say coefficient, in this term and divide it out. So negative 3, dividing a negative 3 by a negative 3 gives us a positive 1y, which is what we're looking for. We don't write the 1. And we divide each of these terms by a negative 3. So here, this becomes a positive now. 
4 thirds x, and this becomes a negative 4. Now, a little head, heads up here. This is a review of something we have here. And I see I've picked up an extra pen, and we'll uh, skip that review for now. All right, let's clear this up. Now, this next one's a very common one, a and in our book, instead of using b sub 1 and b sub 2, they just say b plus c, where this is b sub 1, this is b sub 2. The protocol for solving it is exactly the same, except we're just changing the letters a little bit. So to solve this, let's say for the letter H, which is what they're looking for here, we want to get rid of this fraction. So all of this on this side is considered as one term. So if we multiply when we have fractions by the denominator, which is a 2, here the 2's are going to cancel out and multiply this side by a 2. So this will then become 2a. Now here the 2's are going to cancel out. And we get h times b plus c. Now this is a factor, and what is in the parentheses is a factor in a sense. So to isolate the h, we divide out this factor, b plus c, and you can think of it in parentheses. And on this side you don't have to write the parentheses. But this will all then cancel out, and the answer then, 2, 5, is 2a over b plus c. Alright, let's clear that up now a little bit. And we have this next one, c equals 3.5n plus 10. And we want to solve for n. Well, again, we have this term. We're going to move it to the other side, where it becomes c minus 10 and 3.5n. Now, to isolate the n, we divide out the coefficient, or the number in front of the n, which is a factor, 3.5 times n. Just divide by 3.5, both sides. Here this cancels out, and we're left with n equals this. Now, this next one is somewhat complicated. And we want to solve for the letter C. Well, in this case, we have to multiply each term by the lowest common denominator, which happens to be A, B, C. A, B, C. A, B, C. Now, multiplying every term by the same thing keeps this as an equivalent equation. But now the A's cancel out. Here the B's cancel out. And here the C's cancel out. And we're left with B, C times 1. You don't have to write that. And here we're, list, we're left with AC. And I have somehow picked up an extra pen here. Let me erase that a little bit. There we go. And then on this side, we end up with a B and an A. Now we're looking to solve for C. 
Now notice our C is in two terms here. So we have to take the C as a common factor out of these two terms. So we just factor it out. We go C, and it's B plus A, but I'm going to write it A plus B. So I'm allowed to switch these two around. And then that equals AB. Now we've isolated the C. We're going to divide both sides by this common factor, A plus B. These cancel out on this side. And we get C then equals AB over A plus B. And if you had left it B plus A here, that would be fine. But we are allowed through the commutative principle to move that around. Okay, well that was some of them. There are many other formulas. In fact, I'm going to do one that I recall is often used. And that's perimeter equal two lengths plus two widths. And we want to solve for w. So what would be the first thing you did? Or do? Get this term to the other side. Exactly. p minus 2l. Just take a term from one side to the other. Just change its sign. And then this equals 2w. And to get the w by itself, we just divide everything by 2. So the 2's cancel on this side. We get w equals this, and that would be the solution. So one that is very common, some that are very common on our work and test, we've covered now. Uh, I think it would be this one was a very common one. And this one's a very common one. All right, let's go on to our next part. Now, for this uh, next one, as we continue our review, we need to look at this compound formula. And this is used every once in a while in our text as well. So A here stands for the future amount. P stands for your principal that you're going to invest. And then 1 plus the rate, R, uh, it's a percentage, but we convert it to a decimal fraction. N is the number of times it's going to be compounded during the year. And then up here, T is the number of years. And N, again, is the same number of times it's compounded. So let's see if you could take this information and using n as 4 and the t is 2 years, you can fill in this formula. So we've paused. And now we get a equals 8,000. That's our principal. 1 plus our rate is 5%, so 0 0.05. Now the n they're giving us here is 4. And then we have 2 years and n, so 4 times 2 would be 8. So we're going to change our usual pattern and and pause the tape now and see if you can put this into your calculator and get an answer. Okay, when I put this into my calculator, I did 0 0.05 divided by 4. When I put add 1, when I did a caret, which is for an exponent, 8, I hit enter, and I got this. I didn't round off. Then I times this by the 8,000, 
and I got this. Now we're going to put 12 here and then 12 times 2 is 24. This will become 24 because this would be quarterly, compounded quarterly four times a year. This would be compounding it monthly uh, 12 times a year. And let's see what you get. So when I did it with 12 here and 24 here, it came out, you, had a, you earned a little bit more money. So generally speaking, when you have the compounded period more frequent, this would be quarterly, this is monthly, you earn a little more money in your investment. All right, well, we're going to uh, complete this. Uh, this last item was a little bit complicated, and generally you don't have this type of example, but it was a good practice and hopefully useful for you.